guys. It's me, B. I'm freaking out. This is the start of, okay, episode 100 was last week. We did the live in-person celebration. This is episode 101, and I'm officially at Creators Guild, and um, you might see that the studio is not the same as it as it normally is. We're going to figure some things out. We might even switch it up a little bit. Um, but I'm just like, normally I'm in my one, well, my two bedroom, but like my tiny little studio bedroom apartment situation, like by myself. <laughs> and to know that there's another human in here who is listening to me. And I don't know, I'm a little overwhelmed. I really should have taken a shot. He's going to learn a lot about me. Like I had the nervous poops before I got here today. <laughs> Um, well, we're good. We're good. Okay. Season four. I'm so excited for what's to come, S specifically being at Creators Guild and having the support of a studio. Like, they're going to be helping me with the editing, with the reels. Like, I get to come to a location, invite my guests to a location. I don't have to be like, by the way, if you're filming, can you not get my apartment number in there? Like, we're official. We're doing the damn thing. Um, and I just feel like it's going to allow me, like, the same amount of time that I spend on the podcast. I'm that I have been spending, I'm going to continue spending that same time, but I'm going to be able to put it elsewhere, like reaching out for brand deals or sponsorships or reaching out for guests. Like, I, I just think it's going to, I think it's going to open a lot of doors. I think I'm on a good path for it. So I'm really excited. Um, I wore this hat to remind one y'all that I have merch available still. How cute is this hat? Um, I have it in maroon and black. And then I also have just like the logo adultish wines. And I also wore it because I knew I was going to be a picky little bitch coming into this studio. And so I wanted LP to just instead of getting mad at me or frustrated because I'm a perfectionist to just be a gentleman. And he was absolutely lovely. LP and Kari shout out. Thank you so much. Um, Kari is going to ask to be put on a different assignment, though. He's going to be like, that girl's too much. He said that the live show, he was one of the producers at the live show. And he's like, Y'all were crazy. LP said we talk about things that they've never talked about, <laughs> which I love. We're unique. We're different. Me and you, Winers. Um, I also got this fancy new iPad. I just felt like since I'm going to a studio now, like, might as well have an iPad. Like, it kind of feels like beat me on my pager or, like, like make an appointment with me type of thing, you know, like moving on up in the world. Um, I don't even know why I did this because I don't even typically look at notes anyway, but it's good for now because I am shitting my pants nervous. Um, so merch I have available sweats. I only have like a few sizes left. So if you're a smaller medium holler, I thought medium was going to be a good size for y'all. It wasn't like nobody bought medium. So I have smalls and mediums left. Let me know. I was reminded this weekend that I did once bribe a man I was about to have sex with, a guy that I was dating. Um, like, he knew about my podcast. Obviously, he was always interested in asking me about it. And he was, like, asking me about my merch. And we were, like, on the couch about to start fooling around. And I was like, were you going to get some? <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, I'll get some later. And I was like, you can get it now. He's like, right now you want to go on your website? And I was like, Yeah. He's like, right now, like before we have sex? And I was like, yeah, I think you should. <laughs> so definitely that means I've prostituted myself a little bit. But I was reminded of that because I did have a gentleman suitor, um, a past. Someone from the past has come back. They never left, really. But. Do you guys remember? Okay, I'm I'm doing two separate stories here. Do you guys remember Short King? Remember when Short King came and stayed with me um, over rodeo season, and he uh, <laughs> he borrowed my a sweatsuit of mine, and I like immediately got the ick because he was like drowning in my because I wear my sweats oversized, and so he was smaller than me, it was, or maybe my size. I don't know. It just was like not good. Like it was immediate ick. And it was a different story because the gentleman suitor who came back and was I hung out with this weekend is 6'5". And so it's like my sweatsuit was like too small on him. And you think that would give me the ick too. But no, it was like hot as fuck. And also he was wearing my merch. So anyway, should I say who that was? <sighs> that was Romania guy. If you know Romania, you know what I'm talking about. 
That's all I'm going to say. Um, okay, but now we need to get into the best night of my life, which was not with Romania guy. Maybe three years ago, the first time we met, I would say that was one of the best nights of my life. Anyway, I digress. The best night of my life was July 25th, the 100th episode in-person show. I have to take you back to like, well, you're going to listen. If you've listened to last week's episode, you'll you'll understand how it came about. But like, I need you guys to understand that in that moment or leading up to that moment, I was a whole ass event planner. I started thinking of the show in April and I'm a um, decision paralysis type of girl. So like I thought of it, it was planned, the date was booked or like being talked about with guests, but like then I didn't touch the plans again for like another what April, May, like maybe towards the end of May. Like I just was feeling like I don't know. I work better under pressure, too, which is weird because I'm under pressure right now and not working very well. <laughs> um, so anyway, I started planning the show and it just is a really big sign of growth for me because I'm such a control freak and such a perfectionist. And even talking to LP and Kari while they were setting up the studio, like I just feel totally calm about things. I just feel like the way it's going to go is the way it's going to go. Like let the chips fall where they may. It is what it is until it ain't. So originally I was going to have that 100th episode celebration at a winery and I was so excited about it. But turns out this winery doesn't have air conditioning because it's like an open air, like open air warehouse type situation, which I love the winery. I love the vibe. But as I started to like do some site visits, I was like, whoo, this is not going to work. And I just started getting really overwhelmed at the thought of Anyone leaving the event early because of the heat or even people sticking it out, but being like, damn, like all they could say, I was worried that all they were going to say about the event was like, oh my God, it was so fucking hot in there. Not like, wow, that was such a great show or wow, the drinks were good or that was so funny. The guests had, you know, great things to say. So I had to make the executive decision to pull out on that, which was totally fine. And, um, the winery was lovely about it. Um, and that's the other thing to note, too, is like it was free. The first venue was free 99. So when I had to make the decision to make it a pay a venue that I was going to pay for, in addition to the things that I wanted to pay for to have available at the event, I was like, OK, the tickets are going to be going from 20 ish dollars per person to like 40 to 50 dollars. And I honestly probably should have charged more. If you think about it, you go out one night with your friends. You're going to a live show or a show in general and getting an open bar, full bar like you're going to spend at least 100, 150 bucks. So you guys got a deal, in my opinion. But anyway, the goal was of the show to spread awareness about the podcast, hopefully obviously get more um followers more interest more listeners to sell merch and I was hoping to break even as far as um y'all are probably like wow she's being really transparent but I'm always that way with you the goal was to at least break even as far as ticket prices go towards what I was paying for like the venue the DJ the stage the speaker chairs like all of that stuff like it was a full-on event I feel I now totally get why people are so stressed out about their weddings and I never want to have one. <laughs> I'm eloping. Unless I marry unless I'm marrying into a family that has so much money that they can hire a wedding planner where I don't have to lift a goddamn finger, I'm eloping. And I had a great experience planning this, but it's just like it's too much. It's too mind consuming like mind consuming, time consuming, emotion consuming, like there's just too many I's to dot and too many T's to cross. There's just always something popping up. And I was doing it all on my own up until I think six weeks before the event is when I finally announced what was actually happening as far as it being a live show. Um, and uh, Shalena from Women and Wine and Social Bosses, Social Boss Empire, Social Boss. Shoot. I do this every time. Anyway, Shalena. Um, reached out and she's a listener of the pod. She's a whiner. And she's like, Hey, I want to help. And I was like, in what way? In what way? Do you guys know what that's from? It's from, um, oh my God. Oh my God. Kari, are you a movie guy? 
What's that from? In what way? Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That's what it is. You've never heard Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Do you have a mic back there? <laughs> he said he's never heard of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Wow. I'm going to really bring some surprises into this studio. <laughs> Earlier, I'm segueing, but earlier we were trying to hang the curtains up on this rod and he was hanging them so flat. And I was like, they need to have a little ripple in them. You know what I'm saying? Like a curtain. Like, you know what a curtain? He's like, no, I don't. I'm like, okay, you're a boy. Never mind. Anyway, they need a little ladies touch in here, I feel. Um, okay, where was it going? Oh, yeah. In what way? How can you help me? So she's like, yeah, I want, I'm an event you know, producer, event manager. Like, I want to help produce your event. So... I don't know how I thought I was going to do that without an event production person, event management person, event coordinator. Like I had all these ideas. Once I found the venue, I was like, great. The chairs are going to magically move themselves afterwards and the cocktail tables are going to swim into the center of the fucking venue. Like who was I thinking was going to do that? Not me. Like, so thank God for Shalena. She held me so accountable. Um, and she just was very like supportive and she was also like, bless her. Like she was like so shocked at some of the things, you know, she was like, and where's your, where's your, um, gosh, I can't even think of an example, but like, and you're doing this, right? And I was like, I'm doing what? She's like, oh, and are you blasting your email list? I'm like an email list? What? I don't have an email list. Like she's like, girl, get your life together. Like you're crazy. So Anyway, I really appreciate her help and really couldn't have done it without um, without her and her team. So thank you to them. Thank you so much. And oh, my. Yeah, I can't even. Her email is just absolutely beautiful crafted. Um, and just the contact, making sure everyone was on the same page and there on time, blah, blah, blah. So huge help. Um, and then obviously Traveling Spirit Bar did the bar. Then we had DJ Shante. Then we had Chris from BPM Entertainment, which highly recommend that guy. Um, he was in charge of the stage and like the speaker chairs and was super helpful as far as hanging like my sign disco balls and like the stage setup, which was I did not pay him to do like he just did it. And I think um, Creators Guild, who did the audio and video production for the show, who killed it. Um, I don't know whose responsibility it was um, to get that. There's one disco ball. If you guys are watching the episode 100 on YouTube, there's one disco ball on the right side of the stage hanging there, just lonely. I told LP was like, how did you like how the episode came out? And I was like, that disco ball is going to haunt me for my whole life. Like, because there was 12 disco balls hanging, but only one made it into the show. <laughs> And it just looks like it does not belong there. But besides that, absolutely fucking loved the production. Loved the stage guy, Chris. Um, people are like, oh, you got a stage? I'm like, yeah, guys, this is a real show. Like, that's why I'm charging you all 40, 50, 60 bucks a ticket. I have purchased these things. Like, I and I just I'm so I'm so proud of myself. I'm so amazed I'm so bewildered I'm impressed I also like there's things that I would do differently for the next time but the reason why I started off this conversation anyway is saying that growth is so I'm experiencing so much growth personal growth is because in the past I really would have let like those small things that went wrong or were delayed or anything that didn't go exactly according to plan I would have let that throw me for the biggest loop freak me out like when I first got there the setup was like a little bit behind ish I mean and like that has nothing to do with anyone else but me because I only gave them two hours to set up this event for 80 people um so anyway got there you know it was like just like not quite as ready as it I thought it was going to be and my friend was there um see why see why I was there early because he was one of the speakers and then his wife who's my best friend Kristen was like I can tell that you need help, but like you look good. Like you're not like panic stress. You're just like got to get stuff done mode. And I was like, okay, perfect. Yeah, you can do this. You can do that, you know? So, but that's just, I, I'm not a delegator. Like I'm a doer. I'm like, I'll just do it myself type of thing. And so I'm just really happy with the overall experience, like personally, in my personal life and in my professional life. I just feel like major moves were made. 
Um, I'm sure I'm going to forget. Like my intention was not to list out the sponsors, but now I've started listing them. So if I forget someone, I'm fucked. So, okay, we've got Shalena, Women in Wine, Sh Social Bosses. We've got Traveling Spirit Bar, DJ Shante on the ones and twos. We got um, Creators Guild. Hello. Um, we got Chris from BPM Entertainment. We got... Um, Gold Experience photo booth, that 360 photo booth. How cute was that? I only got one video in it. Like, it kind of sucks to be the host of the party because you don't really get the chance to participate in everything, you know? Like, which is how I feel like maybe the wedding couple, the married couple might feel too. It's like they put on this twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 event and it's like they ate, you know, five hour old chicken at the end of the night and like didn't even get to take the photos that they wanted. Like, it just sounds miserable. Who wants to have a wedding? Not me. I'm not doing it. Um, gold experience. Um, and then we had OST wine club do all the, well, not all the wine. They did on a case of wine and I bought another case of wine and y'all fucking drank so fucking much. I also didn't account for, I don't know if like a lot of the crew was drinking. Maybe that was a big part of it, but like y'all drank two cases of wine. There was, I think 70 people, 80 tickets purchased. I think 70 or 67 people showed up. Two cases of wine. Six, no, seven, seven fifty milliliters. Is that what it is? Is that not a handle? What's not a handle? What's the smaller one? Like the seven fifty, like the skinnier bottle? A liter, maybe? Yeah. Seven liters of tequila. Three liters of vodka. Like I mean, I guess when you say open bar, people just go for it. But I was fully expecting, like, that's okay. I'll buy this other case of wine because I'm going to bring some home. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't, which was fine. I'm obviously so glad that everyone had a good time and enjoyed themselves. But I was just, like, really, really surprised at that. Um, okay, so OSC Wine Club donated a case of wine. Thank you so much to them. Then we had Black Provisions um, was the contact who got um, – Towns Vodka and ooh, what was the tequila? I forget. Donated there. So thank you so much. Obviously, that was a hit. Um, and then the gift bags. If you ordered a VIP bag, you got um, some pretty cool stuff, I think. And that's where I think I went over budget. You know, that's where it all went wrong because I was really attached to the idea of not having a fucked up gift bag. Like I've been to a couple events. I don't know if I want to be too specific here because I don't want to offend anyone. I've been to a couple events where I got a gift bag about the size, the bag wise, about the same size as I gave away. So like, I don't know, like printer paper size, like iPad size gift bag with like a piece of candy and an eye mask. Just don't give me the bag. Don't give me the bag. If you're not putting anything in the gift bag, don't give me the bag. Save it or put it in like a jar for people to grab on their way out or something like I just feel like there's a better way. A better way to go about it. The one uh, I did get some constructive criticism from the show, which love to hear. Um, people said there were too many cards in the gift bag, which totally get like it's not as fun or it's not as um, it's not a big enough impression to make on somebody. Like, for example, you know, OC Wine Club put like a free month of wine in there. Well, somebody might very easily like throw that card away or forget about it. It's going to be in the back, you know, the bottom of their purse or something like that. So. That is good constructive criticism, and I wasn't encouraging brands to give me not cards in the bag, so just something to think about. Um, but if you remember, OST Wine Club did put a month free in the wine bag. PKL Social put um, free court play with purchase of food, um, I think for an hour or two hours, and that place is so fun. So Gold Experience, I think she did some sort of discount on a photo booth rental, which amazing. Um but yeah, like the coasters and the keychains and the wine and stuff, like I bought that all out of my pocket because I just couldn't stand the thought of like an empty looking or bogus, bogus, what a weird word. I haven't said that in a long time. A bogus looking gift bag. You know, I wanted people to like the 30 people that bought that gift bag. I wanted to be like, that was worth the extra $20, which that full size Kate Somerville face wash, I think is like $65 alone. So definitely worth and that's an amazing brand shout out to Jacqueline Sepulveda again thank you so much for um reaching out to me and saying that you wanted to involve Kate Somerville in the bag that was amazing um so other constructive criticism I got from the show was 
it took a long time for people to settle down in between. So like as the show was going, you know, I think people would get like riled up or laughing a bunch or like involved and it took the audience a while to like settle down. And so it was hard to hear us on stage. Um, nothing to do with like the mic sound, but it was just like a little too rowdy, which I get. And like, I'm not complaining because it means like there's conversation being had and that's the whole point. Also, I heard that there was like a lot of people at the bar, like chit chit chatting away during the show, like, which I, you know, like next time, like go up and get your drink and then come back and sit down. Like, don't make a big scene of it. Um, what else? I think that was kind of the only constructive criticism. My sister, so Megan and Courtney were there, two of my sisters. Katie missed her flight, which you've heard on the previous episodes if you've listened. Poor girl. Um, but my sister was like, you forgot to think, like you thanked everyone, like the sponsors, your speakers that you had on there, but you didn't thank the whiners. You didn't thank people for coming. And I was like, yes, I did a million times. And I listened back to the episode and I did like in the beginning and at the end, but like maybe I didn't say it enough. Thank you so much to everyone who came. Like, I, I literally, there would have been no show, like, wouldn't have been able to do that show without you all being there. First of all, yes, I kept saying to people, like, it's obviously about the ticket price. Like, yes, you're supporting me by purchasing the ticket. That's helping me towards my cost. However, also, like, you're supporting me by being in the room. Like if you're somebody I know or you're a, or a listener of the podcast, you're a true whiner. Like I need to see you there because can you imagine doing a hundredth episode celebration with nobody in the building? <laughs> like hoping you're going to sell 75 tickets. That was my goal. Selling 75 tickets. I sold 80. Um, so selling 75 tickets and having like 30 people there in that big ass venue. Like how embarrassing would that have been? So it was about the ticket price, but it was also about just like the love and the support and the people that I know being there for me. So if I didn't say it enough, literally wouldn't be continuing doing a podcast without the people who listen and um, and chime in and conversate and pass on to other people, like share the podcast with with people who like podcasts. So thank you so much. Thank you to everyone who came out. Um, thank you to shout out to Amy and Jill. For traveling from California. I mean, my sister did too, but like kind of required to, you know? Um, Amy and Jill, thank you so... Amy messaged me. She bought her ticket and she's like, see you there. And I was like, oh no, 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 no. It's, it's in Houston. Sorry, it's an in-person show. It's not like a live online show. And she's like, I know I'm coming. I'm like, huh? Like she was one of the first people to buy her ticket. I can't even. I'm not going to get emotional because Kari's going to get scared and run out of here and I'm not going to know how to turn off all the equipment. But... I I am still I think I, as I'm talking I can't even talk I think I'm still grasping the feeling of the support that I felt um and my friend Ashley made a good point um who was so sweet she she lives in California and she was just like constantly keeping up to date with me about the podcast which is just like it's really hard to maintain relationships out of state and especially when you're going through different um stages in life and um I just really appreciate that she made it like a constant priority to to ask about but she made a really good point the other day asking me about the show and she said she the reason why she made it a point to like be so inquisitive about it and she knew it was so important obviously because I talked to her about the podcast all the time however she goes I feel like you're one of like out of our friend group, you're one of the people who hasn't had a baby, hasn't gotten married. And so you haven't had people like show up for you in that way and celebrate you. And I got emotional when she said that because I've thought about that before. Like, oh, I wish people would celebrate careers and not just babies or, you know, job opportunities or being an entrepreneur, you know, there's other things to celebrate than having a baby and getting married. Those are amazing things. Like, of course, shout from the rooftops. Like, but there's maybe I'm never going to have a baby. Maybe I'm never going to get married. Like, so to think that I never would have been celebrated or like the people who support me would have never shown up in that way because I didn't get married or have a, or have a baby. Like, and that's why I think when she said that I got emotional, but I also thought like, that's why I got so emotional because I, I have a, I have so many good people in my life, personally, people through the podcast, people from my previous days, like costuming on set. Like I have a phenomenal 
group of people, individually groups in my life. But I've never there's never been an opportunity for people to literally show up like in person in that way. Like my birthdays, you know, birthdays are different. Like this was like a huge accomplishment that I worked my fucking ass off for. Um, and so to have people understand the gravity of that and like welcome it with open arms and share it on social media and send me cookies. My friend Brittany and Tracy sent me cookies to congratulate me. Like they couldn't be here in person. Like it's just like, I'm still, I'm still processing it. I talked to my therapist about it already. And I, she's like, let the tears go. Let the tears go. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I'm not stopping the tears on purpose. They just kind of stop on their own. Now I used to be such a crier and it's stopped. Um, it just feels I also was never open to this type of support. I was all, I'm always I'm a doer. Like I'll just do it myself. I'll just do it myself. Why ask somebody for help? Like I can do it better. I can do it more efficiently. I can I don't have to count on somebody and if I count on somebody and they disappoint me, like why would like So it's just like I think it's a huge um life change that I'm experiencing and um, I think it kind of started with the photo shoot. Okay, so with the photo shoot that I did for my brand and also like photos to prepare for this live show, I have a stupid example, but for me, it, it makes a big difference. <laughs> I plan, you know, I used to be a costumer in LA. I'm very into fashion. I'm very, like continuity is important to me, like something looking the same as you had in mind, like perfectionist. So I planned out all my outfits the night before. I got jewelry donated from NG Jewelry. Shout out to her. Um had everything paired together as I would for like an actor on set like this 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 is what I'm wearing like saving time like professional clean good we get to the set the next day to do the photo shoot and the earrings that I paired with my sweatsuit like y'all know I only wear hoops like hoops to the gym hoops to walk my dog like I just wear hoops and it was the only pair of hoops that NG Jewelry gave me and I couldn't find them and I just I know that is such a silly, stupid example. You guys are probably like, wow, you're going to freak out over hoops. Yeah, I used to freak out over that. I used to freak out over that. Like if something wasn't where I had it, where I last placed it, the way that it was supposed to be, like I never have a plan B because plan A is always going to work because I'm always going to make plan A work. Like something as small as a hoop earring not being with my outfit that I planned could throw me mentally. And I just remember... Um, my friend Kristen who helped on the shoot, she was like, well, wear these instead. And I rem I took a moment because I knew what the moment meant. And I was like, okay. And I just went with it. And I just felt <laughs> this shift in the pressure that I put on my shoulders that I didn't need the hoop earring. The hoop earring does not define me. Like, I'm hearing myself talk and like, how stupid does that sound? <laughs> but I just went on and had the best photo shoot and loved the photos, loved all the outfits, never once thought about the hoop earring. And that's just how it went going forward with the planning of the show. Things would get wrong or I was quoted at an expensive price. And instead of letting this throw me and like throw my momentum off and scare me, I would be like, OK, that's that's fine. Or even like I was bouncing ideas off of oh, redhead Rachel shout out you know I appreciate you but I was gonna like pay for the valet for everyone for the show and she's like because the parking was really bad so the venue recommended valet and they have like a preferred vendor and they gave me a price and I was like okay like it is what it is gotta pay for it so I was telling redhead Rachel about all my plans and she's like you're paying for the valet and I was like yeah like you know I just I want everyone to let's just like have a good time and just like not be responsible and she's like Paige like I think that's great that you're doing all this stuff but like anyone who goes out knows that they're going to have to either pay for parking or pay for valet. Like save yourself some money. And I was like, really? She's like, yeah. So I called the valet guy back and I was like, scratch that. Give me the minimum that I can pay and everyone else can pay their valet price. And I just did it. And like, I hope that sounds relatable to people because they're little, little moments that I just keep reflecting on. Like, 
Oh, she's doing that. She's growing. She's a boss woman. Even coming into like letting letting the control go of my studio. It was in a very small contained space. Like what I said went like this is probably why Cinco was like, I got to get the hell out of here when he was helping me produce in my <laughs> apartment. Like I'm a very particular person. I was probably miserable to work with. Um, and now I just feel like it is what it is. Like, let's 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 try to make what we want. And if it's not like let's move on. I don't know. I'm just really enjoying this phase of life. OK, so back to the show. Megan and Courtney have to give them a moment. Megan and Courtney, my sisters who made the show. Katie. Oh, you wouldn't have even been here. She wouldn't have even been here in time to be my personal assistant because she was getting in the day of the show anyway. Megan and Courtney, I invited the people that I'm close to, my sisters and friends in California, when I planned the show, I said, hey, I'm doing this show, um, whatever the date, you know, save it. Like, obviously, don't plan on traveling. But, like, if you can, cool. If not, don't plan on traveling. Like, no pressure. Megan and Courtney came. They came the day before. I didn't even know. I didn't even register that, like, I was going to need their help. Because, like, I was just, like, doing the damn thing. Like, I was knocking shit out every day. Don't forget I have a seven to four full-time job as well. Um, by the way, my boss did find out. <laughs> Wait, I have to tell that story in a second. Okay, so anyway, Megan and Courtney came um, and they just were immediately like, put me to work. What can I do? And I was like, yeah, okay. Like, yeah, you could stuff the gift bags and you can organize this and you can do this and I just the way in which they participated so effortless, effortlessly, so um, like they were out of my way, but in my way, like in the right way, um, they really catered to my every move, need and ask. Like I felt like the bride, <laughs> like they just were so cognizant of the huge event that I was putting on that they wanted to take off any added stress or tasks from that. And like, I just didn't know that I was going to need that. And I'm also proud of the way that I reacted to that, to receiving the genuine um, help <laughs> to just receiving the love and support from them. So I mean, at a certain point, like, I think I said this on the sister podcast, episode 99. If you didn't listen, it was a doozy. I would go listen. Um, but, like, at, at a certain point, like, we were running last minute errands and I, like, passed my sister my shopping bag. And I didn't even say, like, in my head, I was like, can you hold this? But, like, I didn't say those words. And she just took the bag and then we were just like, like, she was really my personal assistant. So I just, I, I, I am. I'm not surprised that my sisters help me in this way. Obviously, that's what they do. Like, we've done similar, not similar, but, like, I've just never had an event like this where I need this type of support or help. And so I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what I would need. And I, they just, they did. They knew. They knew. So thank you a million times to you, Megan Coco. I appreciate you so much and they like really stayed out of my fucking way as far as my apartment goes because i say this all the time i live in a 720 square foot apartment barely room for me and pedro in there so to have two other adults <laughs> in there like that was a lot like the bathroom is two people can barely stand in the bathroom like it's just it's small quarters especially for like upcoming an event like that you know what i'm saying um, I wanted to touch on my, the solo part that I did for the, the live episode. Like that was a huge deal for me. And like, I think it was 12 or maybe 14 minutes long. And, um, thank you to CY for the pep talk. Like he could tell that I was stressed and he's like, all you need is the introduction. Like everything else will flow, you know? And I was, I was doing a good job of staying calm, but he could tell, I mean, he does this for a living. Like, he's like, you got this be like, just be yourself. Um, Carolina, huge shout out to her she just like she does media every day for her life and she just knew like at certain points where she was like hey are we distracting you from you know you're concentrating are we distracting you from your quiet time and I was like yeah because we were all in like the little VIP backstage area 
And she's like, okay. She's like, everyone quiet down. Like, you know, basically leave Paige alone. So like, and I didn't have to be the bad guy. And it's not that I even wanted to be the bad guy, but like, I didn't even, I didn't even know I needed my quiet time, but like she knew it. So thank you so much for that. Phil, (laughs) Phil was so nice. Like right before I went out, I didn't even ask him for a pep talk. I think I was just like probably looking there like doe eyed, scared to death. And he's like, P like, or no, he doesn't call me P, which I have to say, I'm done with everyone calling me Paige. My name is P. All the poor horsemen. Car, that means you too. LP, Phil, JC, KC. My name is P. I don't know how I let you guys all call me Paige for so long, but I don't like it. I don't call, my nieces don't call me Paige. Nobody calls me Paige unless you're mad at me. And so we have to, that has to stop. My name is P. So I told Phil that. But anyway, as I'm about to go out for the show, he's like, Paige, you got this funny you're natural like you got this in the bag like this is your shit you do this every week like you got this so shout out to Phil for the pep talk thank you so much Dr. Viviana came to partay she might have been my favorite she was throwing she was throwing full size sex toys into the crowd (laughs) I thought LP from Creators Guild was gonna have a heart attack because I thought one of those boxes was gonna hit the camera and then my Kate came out, which, oh, thank you so Like, that's what I'm, ta- like, the details and the thought that my friends put into supporting me this night, insane. I don't even know if Rachel thought about the fact that I said I want, I was going to get myself a cake and then I decided to do a live show and then she got me the cake. Was that my 100th episode celebration cake or was it just like a cake to celebrate? I want to know. Um, actually, she's going to be on next episode, so I'll ask her then. Um, but anyway, yeah, Dr. Viviana, like, she brought the vibes, I didn't know that she was going to, and I'm so happy that she did. But so then I did my little solo thing and I was nervous for that. That's the thing that I like, my heart was kind of stopping for. Um, But I fucking killed it. Like, let's do it again. I didn't even really know you guys are going to die. I didn't even know what I was going to talk about at all to anyone. Guest wise, topic wise, outline wise, solo part wise until the day of that's just how I roll that's just how we roll that's just how I roll so while I was steaming my clothes that day is when I came up with my little like opening segment um that's just like I'm a visual or like a do it learner like I have to talk through something and and then do it shortly after because then it will leave my brain um but yeah, I just I think it's important for most of y'all have been around since season one when, when it was with Carolyn and I. And I mean, actually, probably not. Maybe only half like half of the people in that room were around from season one. Half of the people were not. Um, and then obviously, like the the winers as we grow, don't know the backstory. So I wanted to give everyone some perspective on the journey that I've been on, the road that it's taken, how it's looked for me to get to 100 episodes And it hasn't been pretty, but a couple things. My friend Kiana told me that one of the things that she loves so much about my podcast is that I'm always just like transparent and raw. And, you know, I think maybe she was maybe thinking like I was a little bit nervous about like letting go of the control or like now I'm not doing it myself anymore because I'm at a studio. And so like, am I doing all the work? And is this still my show? I'm not... I'm not feeling that way, but like, I think she was understanding that maybe like some of those pieces were concerns. Like it's a huge deal. Like I worked my ass off to learn the software, learn the technology. Like when I, until I knew that there was like a D Hummer to help with the audio, like I was searching for hours on YouTube, trying to figure out how to do the denoise or D Hummer situation. So it's just been like, I just want to make sure that like all that work is not forgotten, you know, from, for myself and the listeners and she's like Paige like that's never going to be the case like you always give the behind the scenes or like the transparent the raw point of view so everyone is going to be able to see how hard you've worked to get to where you are so it's okay to like if this is what you have to do to grow to elevate do it like it's deserved it's not like you know and shout out to the influencers like who already have a following and start a podcast like bless up it's not me. (laughs) I have not had it easy. So to make it to a hundred episodes, there's so many podcasts in this world. I need to get the stats. Actually, there's like a billion podcasts and only like 200,000 of them make it past three episodes. 
I'm one of 200,000, like, which sounds like a lot, but like not compared to a billion, whatever that stat is, I'll have to look at it. Um, so fuck. Yeah. Proud of myself. Oh, that's the other thing too. I was on a walk with my friend Taylor and, um, I was like, okay, like I'm so excited for the studio. Like I'm going to be able to, you know, level up, use my time for other things. And I was like, well, you know, podcasters do do it, do still do it by themselves. Like a lot of podcasters don't hire producers or don't hire a studio and stuff like that. And she's like, yeah, but aren't those like full-time podcasters? And I was like, you're duh, you're right. I'm not a full-time podcaster. I have a job, I have a full-time job. And I'm trying to like, and this takes up another full-time job hours. Like maybe not quite, maybe 20 to 30 hours a week, not 40, but it's okay. It's okay for me not to do it all. So that was a spastic ass episode. I'm really curious to hear Kari's thoughts on this. Um, at the end of the day, I'm so happy and proud with how the live show went. There are things that I would do differently, but I would never know that unless I did a show, unless I threw an event. And I just go back to the moment where I thought of throwing an event and I just really can't believe it actually occurred. Like, it's still very unbelievable for me. And it was so fun. I also didn't expect to get off like the stage, be done and then like stand there for like 45 minutes or an hour and like take photos with everyone. Like so fun. So happy it happened. But like didn't expect that. <laughs> I didn't put that into my my Rolodex, like how the night was going to go. I thought I was going to be like out twerking, dancing, taking shots. And I wasn't, which it was so nice to meet. Like they were literal strangers at my podcast, guys, like people that I don't know. People I had never met before, like listeners of the podcast, like not my friends who had to come to support me. Like, so that's pretty cool. Um, is there anything else I want to say about the live show? Just I'm just still overwhelmed. I think I'll be able to break it down. It'll be I'm going to have Redhead Rachel on um, next episode, and I'm sure she'll want to talk about some things and give her take on it. You know, somebody asked me, they were like, I'm surprised you didn't have pinwheels there. Like Rachel would have died if you guys there's an episode. I don't know what number it is, but there's an episode called Costco pinwheels and something. If you don't like Costco pinwheels, something's wrong with you. If you don't like those little pinwheel sandwiches, something's wrong with you. That's all I'm going to say. Um, my wine of the week. I have two wines of the week. They both involve Pedro. If you don't know, Pedro is my dog that I rescued. We've been together for two months. He's amazing. I love him. My wine of the week is I never want to go to work anymore. I didn't know. Like, I've had my family dog, Walter, who's another pit bull. Like, I love him so much. Like, I've felt love for dogs. Like, you guys know I'm not, like, a huge dog person. But, like, I loved Walter. Love him. He's still alive. Oh, my God. But he's close to he's close to death's door. Um there is a type of love that I've never felt that I feel towards Pedro. I have a hard time leaving him. All I want to do is be home with him or be outside with him or be at the park with him. Every, ting every single time I walk by him and he's literally doing nothing, like he's laying in his bed and I'm like, stop being so cute. My wine of the week is like, it's incredibly distracting. <laughs> and... It's actually cut into my podcast time as well. So thank God for the studio, the producers, because it's going to save me some time. I can go hang out with Pedro. That's my one of the week. I don't know how to balance that. I'm obsessed with him. The other one of the week is I think he was almost abducted. Either I was almost abducted or he was almost abducted. I think it was like a dog abduction potentially. So I said this on my stories. Um, I guess at the time this episode comes out, it'll be like a week after I shared on my stories, on my Instagram stories. But I was out walking Pedro, as we do, and if we're just doing, like, a quick potty walk at night, like, I don't really bring my phone. Now I'm going to. But we were walking, and I'm not going to be able to, like, give you all the – it's just not going to make sense. But we were walking down the sidewalk, and a car came behind us and screeched at the stop sign. And I just thought, oh, oh idiot, like, they almost blew the stop sign because it's a two-stop – it's a two-way stop, not a four-way stop. So I was like, oh, my God, like that was scary. So like I had stopped and Pedro was sniffing around. And so I was kind of like stopped at the corner, like waiting around. Um, and then I thought like, OK, move on now. Like you've decided or you've realized that you're an idiot and you almost blew the stop sign. Drive away. 
And then they did. They put the car in in forward and then they like reversed. And now then they forward put it in forward forward, put it in put it in go. What am I trying to say? Move the car forward. Now they're sitting in the middle of this four way intersection. I noticed that a man is walking on the street as well. I don't know. I just like clock it because, you know, I've been mugged before. So like I keep my eye out. And then the passenger person gets out of their car and just like opens up the car, hand on the on the door, looks at me and looks at Pedro. And I'm like, I'm not I'm not like giving him a dirty look, but I'm giving him a very confused look. Like, what are we doing here? And. By the way, like maybe I'm being dramatic, like maybe he was going to ask for my phone number. Maybe he was lost. Maybe he was looking for um, the ice cream man. I don't know, but it was weird as fuck. And so I, I felt weird about it. And so I started waving at this neighbor who I've never met before. And I've met a lot of my neighbors, but I started waving. like, Hey, how are you? Hey, hey, <laughs> like being so weird. The guy started waving back at me because he was confused. He must have thought I knew him. I didn't. Um, so he starts waving, but then is like, huh? OK, I don't know her. So then he stopped. Anyway, that distracted the guys enough to be like, OK, obviously she knows someone or whatnot. So they got in the car and just sped off. The neighbor, I stay there. The neighbor walks up to me. He's like, did they say something to you? And I was like, they didn't say anything. But that guy, like, what were they doing in the middle of the street? And then that guy got out of his car and just stared at me. And he he goes, well, the driver was looking at you like I saw them before they almost blew the stop sign. And the driver was looking at your dog, it looked like. Let me tell you something. I don't know how I would protect Pedro in this situation because how easy is it? Then I started thinking about how easy is it for someone to be a dog snatcher? Like, what am I going to do? You're just going to run up and take the leash out of my hand? Like, I need to start packing a gun on my walks? <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do? I'm scared now. I don't know. I got to think about a situation. Like, I got to think about the outcome of situations like this. But, like, first of all, this man was like a short Hispanic man. I don't know what he thought he was going to do with me, 5'10". I, th- I don't think he could have taken me but i think he could have taken my dog and like what am i gonna do just like sit there and cry run after a car like i I don't know how this would have worked but anyway and then the neighbor was like well you better be careful out here it was an older gentleman and i was like i was like oh red honda civic tps 1607 i already got their license plate and he was like whoa i was like i've been mugged so i've been out here in the streets protect yourself stay safe sir he's like be careful out here (laughs) um so that's what's going on in the heights in houston texas and that's why I stay inside with Pedro. We don't need to go outside. People are crazy. What was I going to say? What was I going to say? Kari, do you know? Do you remember what I was just about to say when I said I'll tell that story later? I got to we got to give Kari um we got to give him a pay upgrade so he can start paying attention to when I fuck up. <laughs> um what was I going to say? Damn it. It was funny. It'll come to me. I'll tell it in Rachel's story. Um, I think I touched on it all. I think I touched on it all. Thank you so much. I'm so excited for season four. Stay tuned. I'm probably going to be doing some remote guests interviewed. Like I know I've done a couple in the past, but now that I have some people who like do this for their job and like I don't have to learn the situation, like I'm going to be taking advantage of that and just talking to people in New York and Austin and Washington. Like who wants to talk? You got a story to tell? Share the podcast with a friend. Let me know. Um, And also let me know what you want to hear. Some someone told me recently they want to hear like financial advice. They want like a financial professional on and like it's going to be in my style. Like we're not going to have like a financial dry conversation like this is how much you should invest. It's going to be like, why did you start investing? Did you lose the money from your baby daddy? Like who hurt you? And then tell us how to operate with money. You know, like we're going to get down. We're going to get the story no matter what. One thing about me. Um, That's it. Happy Thirsty Thursday. Happy season four. Stay tuned. Share the pod with a friend. Like, subscribe, follow. Um, Leave a review. Thank you so much for everyone who's left reviews recently. You can leave a star rating on Spotify or you can leave a worded review on Apple. Love the worded review because obviously I like to hear good things about myself, but the star's fine too. Um, and subscribe on YouTube 
And that's it. So the problem here is I have this really large glass of wine and typically I'm in my house and I can finish it. But now I now I'm at a location and I'll have to chug it or leave it or drive with alcohol. So that's what I'm going to leave you with. Who knows what I'm going to do? Love you, winers. And I'll see you next Thursday.